Hi, I'm Henry and I'm very happy to participate in uh, OpenConf 2024 uh, pre-event. And today we will uh, see together why long chain is a framework that everyone should know how to use. So I'm Henry, I'm a software engineer at Datadog. Datadog helps you to monitor uh, and secure your application at any scale anywhere anytime, uh, but we are not here to talk about that today. And we will see first what is long chain, uh, why it's really powerful and how you can create some powered LLM application. Then we will see the fundamentals bricks of long chain and how everything will help you to prototype and go into production. And then at the end, we'll just have a bit of fun together and we'll try to create some application. What is long chain? Long chain appears in this area where we need to put AI everywhere. I mean, all the SaaS enterprises have some AI. We have some startups that appears every day that need with some incredible AI features. But let's be honest, five seconds. It's basically just a front-end application that calls GPT-3, GPT-4 uh, behind the scene with a prompt. So nothing really impressive, I want to say. And so it's in this momentum that Longchain appeared. But I will say our recent chase, the founder of and, cre and creator of Longchain, explain you a bit more what is Longchain. The way that we describe it or, or think about it internally is that Langchain is basically, and it's, I started off saying Langchain is a framework for building LLM applications, but that's really vague and not really specific. And I think part of the issue is Langchain does do a lot, so it's hard to be somewhat specific. But I think the way that we think about it internally in, in, in terms of like prioritization, what to focus on, is basically Langchain is a framework for building context-aware reasoning applications. And so that's a bit of a mouthful, but I think there's a lot, I think that speaks to a lot of the core parts of what's in Langchain. And so what concretely that means in LangChain, there's really two things. One is a set of kind of like components and modules. Um, and these can be kind of like, th these would be kind of like the prompt template abstraction, the LLM abstraction, chat model abstraction, vector store abstraction, text splitters, document loaders. And so these are combinations of things that we build and we implement, or we just have integrations with. So we don't have any language models ourselves. We don't have any vector stores ourselves, but we integrate with, with a lot of them. And then the text splitters, we kind of like have our own logic for that. The document loaders, we have our own logic for that. And so those are kind of like the individual modules. But then I think another big part of LangChain and probably the part that got people using it the most is like the end-to-end -end kind of like chains or applications. So to recap a bit what a recent change told us, it's that basically long chain has been built with this idea of composability. It means that any AI engineer, any engineer will want to switch LLMs at a point because the price co the pricing goes up and maybe combines LLM with other tools. And everything is possible with long chain thanks to a flexible interface that you can transform into a schema. So it means that you don't need to rebuild your entire application. You are not tied to a specific API. But one day you could use hugging face, a model and hugging face, another day a uh, Llama uh, one or OpenAI one. But Longchain is not a small open source project. So it's an open source framework that has been created uh, in October 2022. That has these first packages in Python and TypeScript and went viral in a few years. It has been awarded the new tool of the year in 2023 by StackShare. And now there is more than 15 million plus monthly download, 90K uh, GitHub star, and a lot of contributors. Longchain has really been built with this idea of community. And so even though the main packages are in Python and in TypeScript, the community is building other uh, long chain in other uh, languages. So in Scala, in Rust, in Go, in C Sharp, in Java with uh, the famous long, long chain 4G. Long chain has a hundred of integrations. I mean, think about an integration, you have something already ready to use. It can be any cloud provider, Datadog, Stack Overflow, Azure, Notion, X, Meta. Think about something, you can already use it. 
But if the integration is, doesn't exist yet, you can still either push a peer into long chain and add it, or create your own integration with your own APIs. OK. Now that we understood a bit what is long chain, we'll see together the fundamental bricks of long chain. In fact, since the beginning, I'm talking about long chain, but it's a really a big ecosystem that will help you to prototype, to test, and to be production ready before deploying it into production. And even though after that, you want to monitor it. So first, we will have the long chain modules. So the long chain modules will be the heart and the brain of long chain. So it will be all the individual modules that will help you to create some chains. We will see a little bit later, more deeply, what are these modules. Then once you have your prototype, you have your chain, your agent, you will want it to use it into your, your application. So either it's in TypeScript and you can directly code it, or maybe you will want to expose it as a REST API. And so you have long serve here for, that exists for that. So it will transform your schema, your long chain expression language schema, into a REST API that you can invoke, stream, batch, everything that you, you should be able to do with an LLM. After that, you can deploy it into any cloud provider or bare metal, and uh, maybe at the end you will want to monitor it, thanks to Longsmith. Because we already have the cloud provider that costs us a bit too much, so let's avoid having also the LLMs. And so thanks to Longsmith, you will be able to monitor your runs, monitor your cost, and monitor and view your different runs. As I mentioned, as I mentioned to, uh, just before, very, Longchain has been built with the idea of the community. And so there is what is called the hub in Longsmith that allows you to basically copy paste directly uh, some prompt, some agent uh, that the community has built and you can, and you can reuse it directly. Okay, let's focus a bit more about the modules. First of all, we have the agents. The agents, it's a standard API to call the different LLMs. You can execute different action based on chains, so reason or, or, or act, plan and execute, or if your LLM is compatible with the OpenAI function, you can directly use them. After this, you have the chain of action. So either it could be conversational, if you want to create a chatbot, for example, or retrieval, if you want to retrieve some document from your memory and from different web API. Then you have the output parser and, the, uh, and, and also the input parser. So you want to be able to use your LLM, the output of your LLMs. You don't want just to have a string or text. You want to be able to parse it into your application, so you need a structured format. It can be JSON or it could be something else. And so what will do long chain? It will, will take the type, your PyDentic types or your sort type, and create a prompt above your function that will describe what it's what the type that is uh, that the function wants. And so you can directly reuse the output into your different function and into your different models. After that, you have all the memory section. There is integration with any kind of DB. It can be vector DB, SQL DB, NoSQL DB, uh, key, key values DB. You think about something, you have it. <laughs> you have the integration you, the, with it, and you can directly call it and retrieve some information from your database. After, what, after that, we have the prompt. The prompt template was the first modules of Langchain. It works a bit like F-string for the person that do some Python, and will try to interpolate the variable in a string, thanks to commas, like a string. So this ensures you that you don't forget any variables and can block some uh, prompt injection, for example. Then you have all the document retrievers. 
you want to retrieve some information from your Notion, from your Confluence, from a web API, or maybe for a Victor DB, you can retrieve it. And the big thing, and the big idea of launching is that it's, a, it's one interface. So it's one document interface that can be used everywhere. So even though it's coming from a Victor DB or from Confluence or from Notion, the result will be a document. And so after that, you can tokenize it, uh, split it, and use it directly in your LLMs or save it into vector stores. So vector stores will help you to avoid redoing all this mechanism and do some vector uh, search in your DB thanks to your LLM. OK. So now we see a bit what is long chain and how it works briefly. But let's have some fun. I mean, the most important thing is to deep dive in it. So first of all, I will propose you to recreate ChatGPT with some basic features. As you know, we are developers. We don't want to pay $20 per, uh, per month for uh, ChatGPT Plus, where well, you can just use the API and it costs less. And also, you have access to GPT-4 with the API. So let's just try to redo that. So I have just created a little uh, Python notebook. So I will do two examples. Uh, one in Python and one with TypeScript. So first, I will just install the different dependencies to be sure that everything is up to date. Then I will import my local uh, environment variables, and that's it. This is the only thing that I set up. When we think about uh, ChatGPT, there is multiple things. First, we know that we need a model to talk with. We need uh, memory. And that's the main thing about ChatGPT. So first of all, we will uh, <coughs> instantiate a ChatGPT uh, OpenAI. So we'll use GPT 3.5 in that case. Then we'll just instantiate the chat history. So in long chain, you have something that out of the box will help you to create this chat history message. And then we will create the prompt. So for the prompt, we'll combine several things. We'll combine a system message that will describe how you want the, um, the LLM to interact with you. So in that case, I just provide the shortest system message possible. In the second place, I put the I, I have put the message uh, a message placeholder for the chat history, and then my input from the human. So every uh, thing has a name, in that case, system and human or AI when it's an answer from, uh, from ChatGPT or from, uh, from an LLM. OK. I uh, explain you a bit about what, uh, there is something called the long chain expression uh, language, and this is it. So I combine a prompt and a client into, in order to create a chain. I just need afterwards to create a runnable um, chain with the chat history. So I have to pass the different input and uh, keys that I want to use. So in my case, input and chat history. And then I just have to do a loop in order to take the input of, my, um, of the human, of the person, print it in order to be sure that everything is working and to have something displayed in my console. And then I will invoke my chain. Of course, afterward, I will just print the response. And that's it. Now, we'll test it. And we will have, in my case, a human AI, hello, how can I assist you? Seems to work pretty well. Pretty good. But when you notice, maybe you notice something, but the message is not displayed step by step. You know, in ChatGPT, you see the tokens dis uh, displayed one by one. So it's streaming. 
And so in order to do that, we just need to change one thing. Instead of invoking it directly, we'll just trim it. Just notice some things that for now, the chat history wasn't added, so I will edit. And so in order to display this different thing, I will just loop from my response in order to get the different block from my stream and display directly the content. We'll just do something else too, in order to be pretty, pretty displayed. I will just remove the end in order to be sure that everything is displayed correctly. So if I do it again, hello, uh, we, what is openconf? Let's see. And as you can see, it's displayed correctly. Pretty cool. Maybe you also notice something else. There is some parent trend appear here. And this is because I told you about monitoring of LLMs. And so behind the scene, I <clears throat> just set up the LLM monitoring from Datadog. Uh, there is also the LLM monitoring from Longsmith that I will show you right after. And so like that, oops, sorry, just trying to find up. Like that, I can monitor my LLM uh, usage. I can see exactly what has been passed as variable, how many outputs and inputs have been used, what was the model, if there are some issues, the, uh, the duration of the call, the quality you can score it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's pretty useful to know if something wrong is happening and you can easily uh, monitor your LLMs and avoid some big issues and some uh, false positive. You have the same Smith, the, a bit like the same thing with uh, Longsmith that allows you to track some calls. Uh, so I don't think it's used here, but you can track directly the different run, compare it, and mark it. Okay. So what have we seen together? We have seen how to pass an input to our uh, to long chain and to the LLM from the, a human, from an input, from a text input. Then we, see, we have seen how to call an, uh, to create a model, to instantiate a model. Maybe I have an output parser, not in this case, but we can have an output parser. Get the output, write it into the memory, and resend it to the long chain. And of course, when the input, uh, when we input something, we will read the memory and inject the memory thanks to the chat history key. Okay. Second exercise, something a bit funnier, I want to say. So uh, the idea is to generate a PowerPoint. So the first thing that we will do is to ask the user to put a topic, a topic that he doesn't know nothing about it, but wants to have a PowerPoint, a presentation about it. So the user will put a topic. Then the chain will do some research on the internet. And then based on this result, it will generate a PowerPoint. Pretty cool, pretty nice. So for that, I set up this, uh, this, UU, this UUI, sorry, this UI, uh, just to have a little website to interact with. And I also set up several things. First, the function to generate a PowerPoint. Uh, so nothing fancy, just using uh, uh, an NPM packages to generate it. So it's not part of the code, but uh, you could see it on my GitHub account. And also, so I set up the system message just to better describe what will be what the chain will be doing, so that you have different tools, uh, that it's a school teacher to be sure that it's in it's talking in a certain way, that I want to provide titles with bullet points, uh, that it can provide me links, uh, and then I just created a, a prompt template based on this intro sequence. So. I would like to create a PowerPoint presentation on that topic, and the topic will be the input. Okay, so let's go. First thing first, we'll declare the different tools. Oops, sorry. 
So, uh, GitHub Copilot is not that smart. We'll just uh, the code behind it. But, uh, it's a secret. So first, we will uh, declare the this, this search tool. So the search uh, new server uh, look. I just doesn't want him to put me everything. That of that vit dash server uh, API key. I just pass him my API key in order to be sure that everything is working correctly. Then, second step will be to declare a dynamic tool. The dynamic tool is just a custom tool that we can use and pass our own functions. So in that case, I will just ask him to declare these tools called search server. And when you pass him a string, he can <coughs> directly search thanks to this invoke function. Next is to create another kind of tool, a dynamic structure tool. So this is for the, our PowerPoint gener generator. Maybe you notice, but there is a specific type for what this function is waiting for, generate PowerPoint. So it's waiting for a main title with sections, with array of sec section, etc. So if it's a string, it will break. And so remember, I, I talked about you, an input and output parser. In that case, it's an input parser. And so what happens? that I will just pass him a schema, a Zod schema. So for those are not used to that kind of thing, it's basically a um, runtime type checker for TypeScript. And so you just declare your type uh, that you want. So an object with main title, section, et cetera, et cetera. And him, he will interpolate it. And so my tool input will have the correct type. So I can directly call my generate PowerPoint. OK. Now, we will want to have the prompt template like before. So we'll just link the different prompt. So the system message, the prompt and throw, and another message placeholder, the agent scratchpad. The agent scratchpad will let a space for the LLM to put the different function calls, if different results for the functions, and will ease the process of generating and making your change successful. If you follow the bit, we didn't declare yet the model, so I will still use GPT 3.5, but same, it can be anything else. Next step is to create the agent, because there are some functions. Since we are using OpenAI, we can just directly use the OpenAI function agent. And so I'm just passing the model, the tools, the different tools that I've declared before, and the prompt. Next step is to create an executor. So this executor will reuse a bit what we have declared just before, so the agent, the tools, and in our case, a callback. So what will do the callback? This is something else also that I set up just before I laid to you. Whereas not only the PowerPoint generation, but also this callback. And so this callback will do certain action depending of what's happening with your chain. So when the chain starts, uh, I say that I will put some uh, this message in the chat with the inputs. Um, when the model starts doing something, the model is doing uh, it will be added directly uh, to the model. Uh, to the uh, to the chat. Same for the LLM end. Should start extra extra. And so like that, you can do some specific action based on the on what's happening with your chain. Already, it, we are almost at the end. Now, we just need to call it. So we'll just use our agenting executor, invoke it with our team, with the theme that the user passed for the input. I will maybe just put a console, uh, console log in case. OK, so it's like 50 lines of code. It's pretty short. But let's see if it's working now. Uh, so we will see to do something about, well, let's see about data. Okay. 
just to be sure that everything is working. Okay, so it's searching with the input data doc. It's giving me some information. And did it crash? Huh, it crashed. You see, it's not perfect. So it tried to code, uh, to code the PowerPoint generation with the wrong thing. So this is an example, exactly what I wanted to, get, to give you. So I will just show you an example that I've generated just before to show you that I'm not a liar, that it's working sometimes. Uh, of course, I deleted it. We'll just, we'll just give him a last chance about AWS. So it's doing some research. Okay, perfect. So it's calling PowerPoint generator with the different information. Okay. And so I have my presentation right here. Introduction, AWS benefits, use case, extra, extra. Pretty cool. It's working, almost working. <laughs> but so let's recap a bit what we have done. First, there is a user that will do, give an input and that is used with the, uh, in, a, in a prompt. Then you have the chain with the model that have the memory with the scratch pad and an output parser in order to call the PowerPoint correctly. You have the agent with the SERP API with the PowerPoint tool that will be giving the data into the callback and the callback will send it to the output and to the user in the chat. This is a basic situation with some pretty advanced features from Longchain, and it wasn't that hard to, to understand. Okay, to conclude, a little conclusion. I see you running to your keyboard, trying to learn what uh, Longchain wanted to create your uh, next AI startup, your next project, but be careful. As you've seen just before, LLMs are not perfect and rely on some probabilities and some statistic things. So don't rely your whole uh, project on LLMs because everything can break at the moment. Even though it's super powerful, we need to be careful with our usage and be sure that we are uh, creating something reliable and something that we can trust and use every day. So thank you. Uh, everyone for attending this session. Uh, if you want, uh, you can have access to my um, slide on GitHub, or you can follow me on Twitter too. Thank you.